back to my painting journey. The last video we did with the Tormenting Reaver, I found out it's called, we just did like a base color and then dry brushing of different shades of that color. But basically it was just all one color in different shades of lightness. So today we're going to work on this little princess that I have, this little jade princess, and she's got a few different colors. So we're going to find out more about how painting goes when working with more than one color. Let's go take a look. Today I have this princess. She's very small. And like I said in my last video where we painted the, the Soul Reaper Ghoul, I'm going to show you how to paint over a white primer and the difference that it makes. So I have our ghoul here. And you can see that primed him black and he turned out very dark, which is great. So now I'm going to show you painting over a white primer. And I haven't painted over a white primer before, so this will be new for both of us. So I'm going to mix up the color for the princess's dress. It's actually going to be about the same color as the plastic. So we've got to figure out how to make that color. Definitely need blue. We're going to do two drops of blue. We're going to do two drops of green to make it a greenish blue. And add some white to make it light. So we'll do two drops of white also. That was a small drop. Now we're going to mix it up. See what that gets us. All right, it's a little green for my taste, so we're going to add another drop of blue. So that's pretty good for a first try. We're going to add another. This is these are our Reaper paints again, and this is pure white. And the blue that I used is ocean blue, oceanic blue. And the green that I used is turf green. Okay, I like that a lot better. So that was three drops of blue, four drops of white, and two drops of green. So we're gonna take our, um, this is my Warhammer small dry brush, um, or you can use any angled brush that you have. Dip it in our water and thin down the paints just a little bit so that they go on um, in thinner coats. I'm going to brush just under, she has a little belt here. I don't know if you can see it. We're going to do light coats. We're going to brush down the length of her dress. I'm going to get just this little spot in the back, and if you get it on something else, it's fine. Let's see, I want her sleeve cuffs to be a different color, so we'll avoid those. That's pretty good. So now we will wait for her to dry and we'll do a second coat. Okay, here she is. She's not shiny anymore, so we know that she's ready for a second coat. So you can see this well enough. And her base was too small for my Citadel handle. So I'm just having to hold her with my fingers here. It's not ideal, but Oh well. Alright. There she is. She's got a second coat. You can see that she's starting to look... It's starting to cover better. Before this coat you could still see the primer through parts of the, the cloth. Alright, so we'll wait for her to dry a second coat. Okay, she's dry. But I don't know if you, I don't know if you can see at the bottom of her dress you can still see the primer through it. So we're going to do another coat. You can do as many coats as you want. You don't want it to get too thick in the crevices though, but she doesn't have a lot of detail. So I'm not too worried about that. Alright, we'll wait for her to dry. Here's her third coat, and I can still kind of see a little bit of primer underneath, but I think we're nearly there. So I'm just going to do one more coat especially covering those areas where I can still see the primer. Which is back here on the bottom and then right above her belt on the front. Alright. Alright, four coats, four base coats, and this is how she looks. You can see, I hope you can see that the the base coat is even. You can't see the primer anymore. It doesn't look splotchy looks really smooth and really nice. So we're ready to go on to the next step. 
So this princess is a Japanese princess. I have a picture of her and she, her belt is yellow, which makes me nervous because painting yellow next to blue, bluish green could just make everything kind of green. And since I'm sure her belt and sleeves are supposed to be like ornamented, I'm gonna mix a little bit of gold with the yellow. Probably need another drop of yellow though. Cause that gold drop is really large. That way I'll have a little bit of shine to it, hopefully. So let's mix it. I'm gonna grab a smaller brush. This one is called Warhammer Character from Army Painter. And it has just a, a smaller tip, but not so small that it would take me forever to do her belt and sleeves. I'm gonna dip it in the water a couple times, probably. That should be good. Get a little bit on my brush and just paint it carefully on her belt. I don't wanna get it too wet because the wetter a paint is, the more it will seep into the cracks. And where this is on a raised area, I don't want it to seep down because then it'll just get on her dress. Just careful little strokes. We'll do our sleeve. Whoops, dropped her. That's okay. That's the benefit of having a holder. And this one is drying pretty quickly. So I'm just gonna go over the parts that are dry and just go right into a second coat. While that dries, I think we can do her face. So I have this Warhammer called Tan Skin. Reaper paint is what it is. Tan Skin. Clean the paint off my brush. I'm just gonna use that same one, the Warhammer character brush. And down the paint so it's really thin. And just carefully. Just got a neck down there too. To get necks, I just like to poke the brush straight down. Basically like I'm putting dots on it. Got on her hair a little, that's fine. I'm also gonna do her arms. Good to turn your mini this way and that as you paint so that you can get every angle and you don't miss something. Okay, I got a little heavy where her hands overlap. So I'm just going to take a dry brush. This one is the Warhammer Monster brush because it's pretty large, but that's okay, it's dry. I'm just gonna dab the paint out of her palms. All right, and it looks like the yellow is dry. It's the nice thing about working with multiple colors is that you can work on a different color while one color is drying. And it helps to save time and just keep your project moving forward. I just noticed that she has almost a little sash coming up here under her necklace. So I'm gonna find my little brush, the Psycho, right here. I'm going to take just a little bit of that gold color and just brush it on really carefully. Here we go. That's perfect. I'm gonna get the undersides of her sleeves so they're not greenish blue. Now it looks like her face is ready for a second coat, so we'll wash out our character brush. Put a second coat over. On her hands as well. That's pretty good. So this is still just basing. That's all we're doing is putting on the base color that we want. Well, we'll do her hair while we wait for the other things to dry. I'm gonna take Reaper Solid Black. And let's use this Regiment brush because it's long and it's still pretty small and it's easy to flatten out, which will be good for painting her hair. I dip it in the water, dip it in the paint. Oh, 
think it really matters if you go up and down or side to side, just as long as you get everything. This is why I like using brushes that can flatten out because I can stick them against the hair, push down, and then press it up to her neck. Okay, got it all. And that coat, that paint might have been a little too thin because you can see that it's just sliding into the cracks and leaving the, the ridges of her hair light, which is not really something that I want, but it's okay, we'll fix it. What next? I think I'm gonna wait for her hair to dry because her skin looks pretty good. I think she has a little crown, so let's paint that. We're just gonna go straight gold. Dragon gold is what it's called. We're gonna go with our psycho brush and I'm not gonna bother wetting this one down. And just do a drop whoop, there on her forehead and just kind of work out from that drop. And then the same for her necklace. I'm gonna find, oh, that's too much. I'm gonna find like the widest part of her necklace, which is this little moon shape, and just kind of dot the paint on there. It's got kind of a hard ball of paint that I'm trying to get off of there. There's her crown. I'm gonna add another layer to her hair. And let's see, we use the regiment brush. We're gonna just go back to that. Being really careful around the edges and around her face. Turn her over the underside as well. We don't want her to have blue hair. Not that color of blue anyway. So that's pretty good. I mean, it's a little messy, but that's okay. We can clean it up later. So next, I wanna do a shade to the dress. I have two shades that I use. I use this Citadel Agrax Earth Shade, which is brown, and this uh, Citadel Nolan Oil. But I think both of those would be too dark for the effect that I wanna go on here. So I'm gonna try to make my own shade and we'll see if it turns out like at all. I'm gonna go with blue since blue is the base color of her dress. I'm just gonna add like one drop of green. Hopefully that'll give us a dark version of the color we already have on there. I'd say that's pretty close. We've got kind of a dark blue-green. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, let's use the regiment brush again. I'm just gonna spoon water into this. Two drops. Let's do a third. I wanna get it really watery. I'm gonna, tr this is trying to make my own shade. See how it goes. Let's do one more. We'll just do it on this side in case it's too much. Okay. So you can see it's really, it's super watery. I'm just gonna brush it across. Cause you remember on that ghoul, when we applied the black shade, it made the purple really dark, which was fine for a soul eating monster. But for a princess, I don't want her to look dark. I want her to look bright. Got some black on there. That's okay. We'll just take our the corner of our towel and just dab it. Rinse off our brush in case any of the black got inside of it. I'm gonna use our monster brush, which is dry, to move up some of these really dark spots. But hey, that didn't turn out too bad. Now on our shoulder over here where it got kind of dark, I'm gonna take um the character brush, which is a little bit shorter, a little more control. I'm just gonna touch up her shoulder just a little bit. Might still be kind of dark, but that's fine. We're gonna wait for that to dry real quick. Okay, that's dry. Uh, I'm gonna go over it one more time with that shade that we made with the regiment brush. I like the regiment brush, it's very handy. I'm gonna add a little more water because it kind of dried out. And I want it to be really wet. Just go over it. It will seep into those cracks. Now we wait for that to dry. The sun is hitting just right now. Made it a little bit splotchy in some places, so I'm just gonna take my regiment brush with the base color on it. Just kind of smooth over those areas that got splotchy. Just a little bit more here. Probably wet it down a little. Let's 
I'm being careful not to paint this color anywhere where it's been shaded really nice because we want the dark spots to, to be visible. Okay, that's pretty good. For her belt, there's not really any ridges or anything, so I think I'm going to skip a highlight on her belt. Or skip shading because there's no crevices. I don't know that it would actually do anything. I think for her face, though, we will take a little bit of this Agrax Earth Shade. And we'll just use the character brush. Rinse it out really good. I'm just gonna take a teeny bit, like just barely dip the brush in there. That might even be too much. And I'm just gonna brush it over her face. And that should settle into her. Uh, she's got like a weird mouth and she looks like, I don't know, she looks like a Pokemon. She has a Pokemon face. That's okay. And on her hair, I want to do some lighter spots. And normally to go lighter, you just would add white. But if we add white to black, it'll just turn gray. And that's not a nice hair color. So I'm going to grab this um, muddy brown color. We're going to give her some brown highlights. So we're not going to do a shade on her hair either because it's already black. But we are going to do some highlights. And I'm going to add a little bit of black to, let's see, we'll just use this brush to scoop it. Add a little black to the brown. So it's still dark and it's not so bold. We're going to use this brush. It's another just cheap Walmart brush with heavy stiff bristles. And then we're going to dry brush. So you load your paint up, your paintbrush up with paint, brush it off until you get about that effect. And brush it over the hair. A little bit more. And we're going to add a little bit more brown now. Take it a little bit lighter, but not too much. I'm just going to load our brush up. There we go. Starting to kind of bend on her base. It makes me worried. Just have to dry brush gently. Okay, there we go. Now, I hope you can see her hair is still black. It's still dark, but it's got a little bit of brown, almost highlights, so that it has, her hair has depth now. It's not just flat Dora hair. It's, you know, it's layered. It's textured, and it looks a lot better. So we're going to do a similar thing to her dress. We have our base color. I shake up our white, our pure white. Uh, just a couple drops. I always add two because when doing hair, they always said that you needed to go at least two levels lighter to notice a difference when you're doing highlights. That's why I do two drops of white. Obviously, if you're doing something that has a lot, like a lot of paint, you're going to need more than two drops. But this should work for us. Okay, we're going to try dry brushing. First, she has a lot of, she doesn't have a lot of ridges, so I don't know how well it will work on her dress. But we're going to try it, see what happens. So you want to do it quickly. Go over, back and, you know just so it catches on the ridges. That might be even a little bit too much, so we're going to take some more off. Okay, sleeves gently on the shoulders. we got a little bit in her hair. That's fine, we'll just take our regiment brush, get a little bit of that black and just... Just dab it on there to kind of cover up that blue that we got on there. Whoop! Dropped her again. Okay, so that's what she looks like so far now. You can see she's got these nice highlights on her dress. It's shaded where we added our little homemade wash. And the base color supports everything, gives it that nice jade colored hue to it. We're going to work on her face some more. Let's see, let's grab the character brush. Get a little bit of water, add it to the skin color. I'm going to just touch up the edges of her face a little bit. Got a little bit on her hair, so again, just take this and dab it against the edges of her hair. Okay, and while her face dries, let's go back to her legs. I'm trying to decide if I want to give her tights or not. I feel like tights would look too white with the rest of her, her clothes. It would be too, too much of a contrast. So we're just going to give her hand legs. 
I'm going to take the regiment brush. The regiment brush and the character brush are pretty similar from what I can tell. And my skin color has started to dry out, so we'll have to get some more tan skin. And this is the character brush. Just brush it against her legs. Now I'm going to add some highlights to her face. We still need to go up and do a second layer on her legs, but in the meantime, I'm going to take one drop of skin color and a drop of white. Faces are difficult. I'm going to mix it up. And it's really light. It's a really light skin color now. I'm going to take the character brush. I don't really want to add very much water to this because I don't want to have to do multiple layers. But what I'm going to do is just brush it against my hand to try to make it into a point. I'm going to highlight her chin. Just brush it across her chin. A little bit more. Maybe I will add some water to it just a little bit to help it flow a little more smoothly. I'm going to add some. She doesn't have a nose, which is weird. Add some to where her nose would be and where her cheekbones would be. Tops of her cheekbones, anyway. And then, let's see, we can use that same same stuff to dry brush with. I'm gonna wash out our, let's see, wash out this brush. Make sure that it doesn't have any weird colors in it. Okay, that should be good. Put it down in there. And wipe off what we can to go up on her arms. A little bit more on her face too. And again, because I don't feel like we got very much that first time. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I'm not gonna really do any highlights on her feet because it's underneath a dress, they should be shaded. It'd look weird if there were highlights on her legs that are underneath her dress. So we're not gonna do that. We can paint her shoes. I'm trying to decide if they should match her dress. Or, yeah, they probably should. The other option was to be gold or black. But we're gonna do, we're gonna take our wash color and mix it in with this one. That should get us pretty close. I'm being lazy. It's okay to be lazy though. I'm gonna paint it. I'm not, I don't care if I get it on the base. But I wanna get her entire shoe. So the trick now is we have to paint the base a different color or else her shoes will just blend in. So I'm going across the back of her feet just to make a nice line there. The sides and the front. So her shoes are painted. I don't think they're gonna need a second coat. I'm gonna rinse that brush off. That was the regiment brush. Now we're gonna take a little bit of that skin color and touch up her feet where they got blue on them. I should wait till this dries. Okay, that's, that's good. I can see a piece here on her elbow that I missed, so I'm gonna take the regiment brush and just touch that up. I probably missed it, yep, on this side too. It's the benefit of turning your minis over and over while you're painting. Okay, still with the regiment brush, I'm gonna go back with the gold and do one more layer of gold on these areas that I can see the green is still showing through just a little bit. As we get better at painting, we'll have to do less touching up, I hope. All right, her hands are still, look like they could use a little more highlight. We're gonna dab it, dab up the last of that light skin. I'm gonna just brush it along her hands. There we go, that looks really nice. That worked out well. And her face. Okay, now you can see that her eyes, well, where they're supposed to be, they got a little washed out. So I'm gonna take the regiment brush with just a little of the normal skin color. I'm just gonna make a little circle where her eye should be. And also where her cheek should be. And got it on her face again. Oh boy. She's just so tiny. I do not know how to do this very well, but that's okay because we're learning together, right? I take my psycho brush and bring it down along the edge of her hair. Just like that. 
There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna take my psycho brush again and I'm gonna try to give her an eye. Well, hopefully two eyes, but we'll see how the first one goes. So I've just got a little bit of paint on the end of my brush. I'm going to dab it in there. And I'm gonna turn her so that the angle of my brush, my brush is a little flatter this way, so I'm gonna turn the miniature so that I can just do this. And I have to turn her the other way so that my brush is still flat. I hope that makes sense. Okay, she's got two black spots now for eyes. Now, let's get some pure white. Stick that on the palette. And I can see that at her chin, the green is starting to come through. So I'm gonna touch that up while I wait for her, the black spots on her eyes to dry. Let's use, yeah, the regiment brush. I'm gonna just kind of hold her upside down almost and just brush that along the bottom of her chin anywhere that I see the green starting to come through. If I brush it along the bottom of her chin, it gives her some natural contouring. See that? Her chin looks a little more slim now because the bottoms of it is shaded. Okay, I'm going to take a brush. And I'm going to try to give her the illusion of a nose, at least. Just brush the tan skin really lightly through here. That's good. So she's got some good contouring on her face now. Hopefully her eyes are dry. I'm going to take the cycle brush and just dip the tip of it into the white paint so you can see there's very little and that's still too much so I'm going to wipe it off on my hand and just kind of dot it in there like that and then I'm going to go take skin color oops, mixed with a little bit of white I'm going to touch up her cheekbones right underneath her eyes. Alright, so she kind of has a little bit of an eye. It's nothing too drastic. I mean, we could try to put a little dot of black on there if we wanted. I'm going to take this acrylic black from earlier. Just do a tiny dot. So that she doesn't look like soulless or anything. Okay, there we go. I'm going to take a little bit of what's left of that black and run it through her mouth line. Her mouth is really weird. It's literally a line. Alright, I think that's pretty good. Take a little bit of that gold color and touch up her crown since it's kind of faded into her skin color a little bit. So just do a dot in the middle of the crown and then work that. Work toward it, work away from it, whatever works best for you. I like doing a little bit of both. Add a little bit to her necklace. I guess we could do just a gold accent along the top of her sash. Let's do that. And along the bottom. And a little more. That means we have to do it to the sleeves too. So they match. One thing that I've found that helps me is generally when I'm painting, I always pull the brush toward me. I mean, obviously not if I'm going side to side, but if I'm doing something like this, it's easier to pull the brush toward me than it is to try to do it up into the miniature. Oops, I got bumped and so it got on her dress, which means we'll have to go touch that up. Just kind of paint over it. That's good. And then to even up those lines, if that bothers you, you can just take a little bit of that gold color that we used and just really carefully, from one side to the other, brush down the middle, which will help to smooth out those gold lines we did, make it look just a little more even. Now for the base, I think we'll just do black. It'll look nice that the miniature starts with black on top, and if she ends with black at the bottom, it kind of makes her feel cohesive. I'm just gonna use some of the cheap black acrylic. Go carefully around the shoes with my cheap Walmart brush. 
because I don't care if this one gets ruined. All right, and there we go. I'll do another coat on the, you know, on the base, just like I did the first one, so that it looks better. So what I'll do afterwards is I'll spray her with a nice matte finish so that she'll be done. But there she is. We painted her, we did shade, we did base color, and then we shaded with our own little homemade shade. And then we did some highlighting on her dress, on her shoulders, in her hair. And then we added some accents with the gold necklace and her face and along the tops of her sash. So when you finish your miniatures, you can choose, there's a couple different options. You have a semi-gloss or matte finish. These are the two that I have. There's also a dull coat, which I've never used, but I've heard it's cool. So a matte finish will give you a non-shiny finish clear coat over your miniatures to help protect them against dirt, dust, scratching, oils, and help their colors to not get dull or dirty or chipped. So matte clear will give you that without adding any extra shine. I like the Rust-Oleum brand because it's cheap. You can get it at Walmart and probably other places and it bonds to plastic which is really important. You can also get the same Rust-Oleum bonds to plastic in a semi-gloss that will give you a little bit of shine but what I've found is that the semi-gloss finishes over these miniatures tend to make the colors almost too vibrant where it looks like they're, they're overdone. It's too much. So I prefer to stick to the mattes. If you'd rather go with a semi-gloss, you are welcome to do whatever you want. All right, so here's our finished princess. I sprayed her with the matte finish spray so she doesn't have much of a shine. And she turned out really nice. I think those gold accents that we did on the sleeves and the belt at the very end really helped a lot. So hopefully you got a feel for what it's like to paint with multiple colors and you learned something. And thank you for joining me on my journey.